Greetings and welcome to another VNBlock screencast. In this screencast, I am going to run through a new course where I will be learning step-by-step uh, -step about how to build a new smart contract using Cosm Wasm. So in previous videos, I've already run through the Rust programming book and I've built various command line programs using Rust and gone through various um, aspects and theory of, of the Rust programming language. Um, I recorded some of the chapters and I left some of them for your own uh, reading. I will now dive into a new book, which is the Cosm Wasm book, which is this one here. Uh, this book basically covers the whole aspect of building a new Cosm Wasm contract. Now, normally you would be advised to use CW template, which is this repo here under Cosm Wasm. This is the recommended approach to start uh, building a brand new Cosm Wasm smart contract. But for the purposes of learning this, it's this book takes a step-by-step -step approach and builds up a contract manually and you get to understand all of the different steps. So I highly recommend if you're going in to start to learn Cosm Wasm and you want to get into Rust smart contracts, you follow this book first and then you follow the CW template that I just showed you. Now this book basically starts from creating a new project, as we can see here. It discusses entry points, it shows you how to build the contract and query, test, and use state, execute messages and events, dealing with fund transfers as well. So it's a really good starting point to know the basics and foundation of building a smart contract in Rust. Now this contract obviously being a starter contract is quite straightforward. It's just a contract that manages a collection of admins and allows to send donations to those admins. But I think that this covers all of the things that you probably would need to know to get started with building Rust smart contracts, such as how to instantiate the contract, how to query, how to execute the contract using JSON, how to serialize and deserialize JSON, as well as creating interface files that are exported in JSON format and, of course, testing the contract as well. So without further ado, let's go through this book now. Now, in this book, I'm going to be following the step-by-step -step instructions on how to go through this and I'm essentially learning as I'm going along. So bear with me as we go through this. I'm trying to make this as concise and as clear as I can while I go through these steps as we do together. So the first thing to note is I'm using this book here, the Cosm Wasm book. Might be a little bit out of date, but I'm gonna try my best with this uh, as well. Now, this is a guide for learning Cosm Wasm. It's not for learning Rust. You might want to go to the Rust tutorials for, for that. And it's also not really specifically for API documentation. So with that out of the way, let's set up our environment. So really, in order to work with Rust contracts, we need a couple of things to be set up. Obviously, we need to install Rust using Rust up. And we also need to be able to target the Wasm 32-bit uh, uh, runtime for um, compiling our Wasm binaries. So we use this to install that dependency. Now, there is also the WASMD binary, but we don't need this unless we want to start to interact with the contracts in a testnet or a mainnet. So we're not going to uh, do, do this just yet. This will be something I'm gonna look at later. Okay, now there is a utility that we can install, which is pretty handy. This allows us to check that our contracts are indeed valid and we can use this in our process while we develop. So one of the suggestions in order to check that this has been stored correctly is to clone the CW plus repo and uh, after running all the tests to confirm that that's installed properly, we can check one of these uh, contracts, run cargo wasm, which will build in the target directory like so, and then we can run this command here the Cosmosm check command 
to check that this is already that this has been built and is uh, valid. Now I've already built this, so I'm going to hop over to my terminal here, and I've got a directory here called Cosmosm, and I've already got the CW plus directory uh, or repo, I should say, cloned. So let's hop into that directory there. Now if I run this, I think I need to remove this and you can see here that because I've already built the contract, this particular contract already, so it's already compiled in this folder and in this release and the Cosmosm check has validated that this is indeed a valid Cosmosm contract. So we've got that installed and I think we can proceed. So this book appears to create a brand new contract from scratch. Um, now there is a, a more preferred approach which is to use the CW template repo. Actually I've got this downloaded as well, you may have seen just here. If I go into that CW template um, repo just for a second here and open that up in my code editor, open up the readme file um, you can see that this is essentially one, uh, probably the, the recommended way of running a smart contract, uh, or let's say instantiating a brand new project for your smart contract that you want to run. And you just would run cargo generate uh, and the project name. I'm going to do that later. I've already tested this out and it does actually work. And I've created a contract this way. But um, because I'm following the book, I'm going to start from scratch and follow every step in this, in this book. So coming back to the book, it says to run a new cargo uh, dash dash lib empty contract. So let's just do that. Now this has created a new Rust library, but it's not ready to be a smart contract. And we need to update the cargo tunnel in this way. So let's take a look. Uh, saying use beta 8, I'm not so sure about that, but let's see what we can do. So, as expected, the great Cosmosm STD is essentially the base standard library contract um, dependency that's required for building Cosmosm contracts. So, we need to in include this for all of our um, smart contracts that we build. Okay, now we're going to look at entry points. So with Rust-based Cosmosm smart contracts, there are actually three basic entry points rather than the single main function that we're used to as Rust developers. The three entry points are instantiate, which you can think of essentially as an instantiation or initializer of the contract or a constructor. The other, uh, this, by the way, this can only be called once per the lifetime of the contract. Then there's an execute entry point, which is where uh, this is basically a read-write, um, or it's a modifier essentially, which can um, is used to handle messages that are sent to the contract. And then there's a query entry point, which you can think of as being like a view function in Solidity. So there's a bit of code here, which we're going to drop into our existing contract under the source lib.rs file. Just looking at this right now, I can see that we're bringing in a number of different um, packages from the Cosmo, Cosmosm SDD um, crate. Things like entry point, binary, depths, and so on. So these are all things which I think are related and required for messaging by the looks of it. And then we annotate this function with entry point so that we know that it's I guess that it's callable from the outside world <clears throat> and then we have a public function called instantiate and this takes a number of parameters four parameters um, and we we'll probably uh, dive into each of these later and you can see it returns a result object with the result with the response uh, type and we can see also that this is going to be uh, okay, uh, an okay type of um, response here that is a new response. So let's just put that into our library here. Okay, so 
the book explains these variables that are being passed into the instantiate function here. They are as follows. So this depths is a utility for communicating with the outside world, being able to query and update the contract state, and also giving an API object as well as some helper functions. EMV is essentially um, the object that you can think of when we're working with Solidity and the EVM. This gives us the state of the blockchain, things like block height, chain ID, block timestamp, the caller address, and so on. Message info contains information about the message that triggered the execution. <clears throat> uh, so this actually, this contains the message address or the sender address and the tokens that were sent with the message. So any calls that come in would, would, have, would have this set to the caller and the value. So this is almost like message sender, message value in um, Solidity. And then message empty is the um, message triggering the execution. <clears throat> so this must, this must be like a payload, I think, that would be sent into this function and other functions. In this case, it's empty, but obviously it doesn't have to be. So really the conclusion is that the body of this entry point is as simple as it could be. It's always going to succeed with a trivial empty response. In other words, this is its empty response that is always successful. Okay, let's build the contract. So we can build it using cargo build and specify a target, which will be the WASM32 unknown unknown, which basically builds the WASM runtime for Cosm WASM. And then the release flag makes it such that it's prepared for a release, uh, that it doesn't include um, debug um, parameters and debugging um, uh, code that's unnecessary and bloats the runtime. This is important to note because you know when we are deploying um, contracts to the blockchain, we need to make them as small as possible and as optimized as possible in order to save gas. And we will be running the release, obviously, for releases and also the Cosmosm Rust optimizer tool. But for now, we're only learning how to program uh, the contracts to build them. But let's try and see if we can actually build this using this, this command. So hopefully that works. Okay, looks like it worked, but there was a couple of warnings. It says unused imports, okay, and contract generated one. Yeah, okay, that's fine. So that's good, it, it worked. And we can move to aliasing the command, which is this section here. So uh, as, we, as you'll see, if you use the template, you'll see that it will alias that command. So instead of typing in this full command like this, we can type in an alias and we can do this by creating a file under cargo um, config like this. So I have to make the directory first. Let's just do that and then run touch again. And then I can drop in this alias here like this and now we can run the cargo command with as follows cargo wasm and that will run the same uh, build and as you can see we get the same errors it doesn't actually build because we didn't actually change anything but we can try the other uh, alias here so cargo wasm wasm debug and yeah so that's cool so that's the uh, aliases it's nice and cool, we can also check the contract validity using the Cosmosm check utility that we installed earlier. So let's try that as well. And fantastic, it passes. So we've got a valid contract. Uh, very simple, doesn't do anything, but it is valid. It has a couple of unknown, uh, sorry, unused um, imports here, which we could get rid of to remove the warnings but this would be a waste of gas if we were to deploy this to mainnet as it would do absolutely nothing. So let's proceed. So in that video, we just saw how we created a brand new project using Cargo, created our first smart contract in Rust, and we were able to compile our contract. So that's the first step. In the next video, we're going to continue with the 
next steps of the book, which is to create a query and to then execute a query and continue onwards. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thank you very much.